Can Alice and Bob measure the fact that the complexity is increasing of their wormhole? Yeah, they can. Here's what they have to do. In a quantum mechanical theory, the vacuum fluctuates. There are field fluctuations, electromagnetic field fluctuations, whatever. Typically, they fluctuate so that if in one place the field gets a little bigger, in some other place it goes in the opposite direction. So there's constant, um, and, and they're correlated. If I take field, field fluctuations in one region of space, forget the wormhole for a minute. These are just two very distant places. Forget the wormhole. The field fluctuates over here. Alice measures those fluctuations. The field fluctuates over here, whatever field it is. It fluctuates over here, Bob, oh, that's Alice, no, that's Alice, that's Bob. Sorry, Alice. Uh, Alice and Bob measure the fields in their neighborhood. They fluctuate, they go up and down. They're too far apart to compare the fluctuations, but they can measure them and they can record them. They can keep track of the time at which the fluctuation of the field, of the electric field went up, the time at which it went down, and they can keep a record of it. Now, the first thing that they find because of these entangled black holes, oh, well, let's, let's go slow, slow. Because of the large separation between Alice and Bob, these fluctuations, the fluctuations are there, but the correlation between them would be very weak. They're so far apart that there's hardly any correlation. Distance between things is a measure of how strong the correlation is. On the other hand, in this circumstance with this entangled pair of black holes, Alice and Bob would discover, essentially as the status of a theorem, that the correlations are not as small as they might have discovered because of the long distance between these. In fact, the correlation starts out large. And with time, the correlation falls. Why does the correlation large to begin with? Because there's another route between Alice and Bob where correlations can propagate between the other route, namely the wormhole. Because the wormhole is there, the correlation between Alice and Bob's measurements is large. On the other hand, because the wormhole grows with time and they separate, that correlation will get smaller and smaller. L here is the distance through the wormhole between Alice and Bob, and that's the way we expect the correlation between Alice and Bob to decrease. On the other hand, we can study complexity in a purely quantum mechanical context, and we would discover that the complexity, the, sorry, the correlation between two quantum computers would also do the same kind of thing as the complexity increased. As complexity of the, of the system increased, we would also find that correlation decreases. They have exactly the same form. One of these is a general relativity prediction having to do with the growth of space. The other is a quantum circuit or a quantum mechanical, uh, what a quantum computer expert would calculate, and he would also calculate the same kind of thing and basically get the same answer. Now, Alice and Bob, what are they going to do with their information? Alice has recorded the fields, the fluctuations in her notebook. She's timed them. It went up over here, it went down at this time, it went up at this time. Bob has done the same thing, but there's nothing they can do with that unless they can talk to each other. And typically they can't talk to each other through the wormhole, but what they can do is after they make the record, the long tabled record of the fluctuations that they've witnessed after the experiment is over. Now, I love doing this. <laughs> All right, for Bob and Alice. Bob can take the long route, bring his information over to Alice, and they can check that the correlation functions decreased in a certain manner, and then in fact it reflected the growing complexity. You can do the same thing with quantum circuits, or you don't need silicon shells to do it, you don't need black holes to do it, you can do the same kind of thing with entangled quantum circuits or quantum, uh, quantum um, computers, 
and you'll find the same behavior. What does this tell us? Well, one interpretation is just quantum mechanics made the correlation decrease because that's, uh, that's a calculation you can do without having anything to do with black holes or anything at all. Or you can discover and notice that the way the correlation decreases is exactly as if there was a wormhole between these and the wormhole grew with time. My main message here, I would say, is, well, okay. Um, we have five more minutes? Two more minutes. Then I won't try to do the next thing. I'll just tell you what I think the upshot is. The, the thing which is, to me, most exciting now about this and which I think should uh, provoke some response from experimental physicists, it that appears that in, a, in this way, in this way of thinking, you actually can do experiments which have the status of experiments on quantum gravity. You do not have to have very heavy objects. You do not have to have Planck scale accelerators. You need silicon shells, or better yet, quantum computers that can simulate those silicon shells. When I say silicon, as I said, the silicon is a metaphor. Um, and doing the right kind of experiments, testing this ADS-CFT connection is, in a sense, doing experiments that are testing ideas which are ideas of the connections between quantum mechanics and gravity. The claim is that any experiment of this kind will be consistently interpretable either as a quantum mechanical experiment or as an experiment involving space, time, and gravity, wormholes, whatever you have. There are many examples of this. I've only touched the surface. I won't go into them here. Let's uh, not... Let's you can come back and ask me about that. If it, uh, but, um, yeah. Okay, you can come back and ask me about these pictures if you want to ask questions. But um, I think the main thing that I wanted to emphasize is this possibility in the future, and in the, and the, and the relatively near future, I think, of actually doing experiments which bear directly on the quantum theory of gravity. That is something that I find ex exciting. Okay, I have um, described a point of view. It's my point of view. It's a point of view which I am responsible for. Responsible not in the sense that I necessarily invented it, but if it's wrong, I will take responsibility for it. You know, like, um, like my president said, I'll take responsibility. I'm not sure you know what I'm talking about. <laughs>